he says that we are making an eternal investment. When you and I invest our time, our temple, our talent, and our treasure in God's work, it has eternal value. 84 years ago, God allowed this ministry to begin. We have evolved and emerged into Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries Incorporated. We are people of purpose, a people destined to carry out the predetermined plan that God has for our lives. We are people of passion, a people growing day by day in a love relationship with Jesus Christ and with one another. We are people of power, a people empowered by the Holy Spirit to share their faith in Jesus Christ as well as compact the devices of the enemy and cancel his plans for their defeat. We are a people who have been called to transform the world. We are committed to God. We celebrate one another. And we cultivate our We are loving Jesus. We are loving people. And Jesus is producing a what kind of church? Jesus. A Jesus kind of church. We are family. We're not celebrating today a building, an organization, nor a reformation. We're celebrating the body, the body of Christ. We are celebrating you. And we're celebrating our willingness, our willingness to arise and build and strengthen our hands for this good work. I am excited looking to Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith for guidance. I am also the first to say that I don't have all the answers. I have vision. I believe I have a vision from God. But I don't have all the answers. But we serve a God who has all the answers. A God who I know and see is raising up a mighty army, a mighty people in this region. In preparation for this morning, I was reminded of a word of knowledge and prophetic utterance I received while attending a conference a few weeks ago in Orlando, Florida. My wife and I attended this conference together called the Issachar Initiative. As I was walking out of the door of the sanctuary, the morning speaker passed me, grabbed me by the hand, and said, you have the anointing for the place and the city you are in. While I know I'm accepting and walking in God's call for my life, my call to the nations, I fully understand that I have also been called to this region and to this people. Although we are in the midst of a very chaotic, chaotic, uneasy time, there is a tremendous move of God's spirit upon his people. A Jesus kind of church has to arise, and it must be now in this hour. A Jesus kind of church is made up of Jesus kind of human beings. There is a tremendous blessing that comes to each individual who identifies themselves with a local assembly. Why is that important? Because there are many people who have decided that they don't want to belong to a local assembly. And while they want to be a part of the body of Christ, they feel like being active, being part of a local church assembly is not necessary. My brothers and sisters, being a Christian believer, being a believer in Jesus Christ, 
without being faithful to a local assembly is like a student who will not go to school, a soldier who will not join the army, a salesman without customers, an author without readers, a child without a family, a citizen who will not vote, and a sports player without a team. My brothers and sisters, being part of a local assembly is paramount to your spiritual growth and to your success for living a Christian life. Amen. I should do a good amen. amen. While it is a trick of the enemy, we must understand to raise up people and to lure them out of God's house and people sit home and say, I'm getting a word on television and, and, and I'm listening to them. You better watch what you listen to tell the evangelist tell you. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to be a part of a local assembly. Amen. Amen. You need to share with brothers and sisters who love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm glad to be a part of the body. How, how are you going to be the hand and you sitting home? How are you going to be the feet that when, the, when it's time for the move and the feet are sitting at home watching Cleft Dollar? Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. That means we can't move because you're not in place. It is important that we come together and share together as a family. Amen, church. I agree with Bishop Tony Miller when he said cultural transformation, nation building, creative preservation are not the ultimate objectives of redemption nor the focus of the New Testament church. What is the focus? Personal transformation, citizenship in the one new holy nation and a new creation and being that creation revealed is what's the focus. God has released his church into a new era of favor. God has pruned away dead things, dry limbs off of the vine, so that we can be more fruitful, moving from accomplishing good things into obtaining great things. We're getting ready to see God cause us to obtain some great things. Amen, church. We're in a time of shaking. The body of Christ is being shaken. And during this time of shaking, all creation is groaning for the sons of God to arrive in both the likeness and the image of God. Being created in the likeness and image of God, we must look like him, act like him, talk like him, smell like him, and move in his power like he does. It is time for the spiritually attuned people of God to arise and shine and allow the power of God to flow through their lives. We must dismantle the things that did not work in the past. Stop repeating the same old cycles. It's time to shut it down. Reboot, restructure in order to rebuild a prosperous, godly future. To prosper, one must learn the ways of God. I think I need to say that again. <coughs> to truly prosper, we must learn the ways of God. Amen. In order to break the chains of mental, spiritual, physical poverty, our thoughts must change by the renewing of our mind Amen. with the word of God. Amen. We have been given the opportunity. We've been given the name of Jesus and a glorious identity that is intertwined with the very nature of God. We are emerging as the sons of God who know how to utilize the name of God to gain favor. And while working in conjunction with God in this realm, we must be ever mindful that just outside of this realm, we've got some eternal help. Just above our head, there are angels waiting to move at our bed. Just above our head, God is waiting for us to open up our mouths and call upon him that he might answer us and show us great and mighty things. Can you say amen? amen. The greatest need 
today is for the church to be the church. The greatest need is for the church to be the church. We need to learn how to be the first century church in a 21st century world. Jesus said to Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, that I will build my church upon this rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now you must understand Jesus didn't say you will build my church. He didn't say I will build your church. Nor did he say you will build your church. But rather he said I will build my church. The Savior is the builder. And as the church according to Ephesians 1 verse 22 says and he puts all things under his feet. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Amen. And he is the head. Amen. And as the head, he calls the shots. As the head, he gives direction. Yes, sir. As the head, he provides the strategy for growth and outreach. As Savior, he is the builder. And as the church, we are the body. Amen. What does our future look like? Our future is as bright as the promises of God. Amen. And if you believe God's promises to be bright, then we have a bright future. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Give me about seven more minutes. I'm going to sit down. So how does God use a Jesus kind of church? We've already stated that a Jesus kind of church is made up of Jesus kind of human beings. Well, Jesus tells us the qualities of a Jesus kind of human being in the Sermon on the Mount when he begins to declare that you are the salt of the earth. Yeah. The fruit of a Jesus kind of church, of an apostolic house, which we are, is salt to its region and beyond. As salt, as a Jesus kind of church, as an apostolic house, we become the preserver of moral and spiritual standards by which people live and yearn for relative to the things of God. As a Jesus kind of church, as an apostolic house, we must produce the standard of morality, spiritual ethics, and integrity within the house, within its region, and in its nation. The men, women, boys and girls, and leaders from the house must be known as men, women, boys and girls of integrity, of ethics, of high moral standards in the region. Their walk with the Lord must be first validated by their character before they're gifted. Yes, sir. Our church is full of gifted. Gifted people, but how is our character? Are we known by how we live or are we known by what we do? Because what we do does not have lasting impact. But who we are has lasting impact. We must be a church of integrity. We must be a church of ethics. I'm going to say like the saints of old said, we must be holy. I can't get a real church here now. We ought to be known by how we live. And while many of us in this room are on different legs of the journey, it does not excuse us from all walking the lifestyle of holy living. I can't get no help here. I know you say I'm struggling. I'm trying to get it together. Baby, get it together. Oh, I got quiet in here now. What? God is calling us to make an impact on the region. And as salt, you can't make an impact talking about your gifting and your character's jacked up. When your gift is high and your, your character is low, you have lost your saltiness. Can't get no help here now. Where's your saltiness? 
I can sing, I can prophesy, I can preach. But how are you living? He goes on and says, you also are the light of the world. Hallelujah. A city that's set on a hill. A Jesus kind of church. An apostolic house. Is, that is one that has become light and a beacon of hope to their regions because of the strength and influence of their impartation. An apostolic house produces and releases light in the region to dispel the darkness that is over the region. I was awakened, I've been awakened all this week around three, six o'clock. And I've been praying, trying to talk to the Lord, trying to hear him, trying to hear what he wanted me to say today. What he wanted to say is the next leg for our church. And mom, I felt like the Lord was saying to me, he said, and he did say on, 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 on yesterday morning, the saints are under attack, Sterling. It's major warfare going on in them. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going on. I said, yes, Lord. Elder Brock, he said to me, the enemy can't get directly at many of them. So he's decided to hit everything around them. He said, I can't get them directly, so I'm going to hit their children, their grandchildren. I'm going to mess in their money. I'm going to mess with their jobs. I'm going to disturb peace in their homes. Because he can't get them. So he decides that he's going to attack everything around them to distract and discourage them. But I heard God say to me, when you go to church on Sunday morning, remind them that they have the victory. that I was with them in the battle. Remind them that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That every tongue that rises against them I will condemn. Remind them that if they are for me I am more than the whole world against them. Remind them that this battle, this battle that they're fighting is not their battle. But it is my battle. Giving them the victory. Touch your neighbor and say, Oh neighbor, I need you right now to help me praise God. Because the victory belongs to us. And I'm not trying to excite anybody, but I heard God say, The victory belongs to. And He said, When you go to the church on Sunday morning, tell
right here, praise him right here. Disturb the atmosphere. Come on, Zion, you know how. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. You see, we talked about salt. We talked about light. But Matthew 5, 16 says that you, first 14, excuse me, says also that you are a city that is set on a hill. And I want you to know that God has come today to heal the city. He's going to heal you and he's going to heal our region. I know warfare is intense. Hallelujah. I've been fighting it. Hallelujah. I've been fighting it. Hallelujah. Y'all just don't know. Hallelujah. And the Brock said that I don't know. When I, when I heard the enemy said, I'm going to get your mind. Hallelujah. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to fight for this because I got to fight for them. And I'm going to fight for them until they learn how to fight for themselves. I can't get no real church. And you got to learn how to fight for yourself. But until you do, you need to have somebody that know how to fight. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you know how to fight? Get an answer from your neighbor. Get an answer from your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you know how to fight? How to get an answer. Hallelujah. Then say, neighbor, together we're going to fight. And some of you who are older saints in the spirit and know how, you, how to fight, you need to start warring for some of the younger saints. Hallelujah. Until they get strong enough to fight on their own. I, I'm not going to let nobody die on my watch. I'm not going to let them lose the battle on my watch. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. Because this thing is breaking. I see the breaking of death. Something open up. I see victory for the people of God. Lift your hand and say, Yeah! Say, Yeah! I thought your neighbor said it's breaking. Say it's breaking in our region. Oh, yes, Lord. We got darkness in our region, but it's breaking for a small community. We've had more overdose than we should have had. More people have lost their lives. More families are breaking up. More families are struggling financially. But I'm telling you, I declare war on the enemy. And he's got to vacate this region because there is a house in Charlestown, West Virginia that's going to stand in the gap that's going to cry out to God. That's going to put the devil on her arm. That's going to come against demonic influence. That's going to break down stronghold. Do I have anybody with me in the room? Is anybody going to fight for me? Anybody going to fight with me? We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for our family. And the victory. I said the victory. I said the victory.
but cursed. And so it brings us to our text in 2 Kings. Lord help me. Could it be that there's some cursed stuff in our region? Because we have not obeyed God. Can't you know it? I'm talking about the Shenandoah Valley. Talking about this whole region. Could it be that we're not seeing the breakthroughs that we should see because there's some stuff that needs to be dealt with? So the bishop, why are you preaching on this on a ride Sunday? We should be shouting. We're going to shout. But we're going to shout with purpose. A greater purpose than celebration. We're going to shout with acquisition and activation. Hallelujah. Because we're getting ready to acquire and take back Amen. what the enemy has told to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I had a real church. Hallelujah. And I got to study this preaching. I heard him tell this long story. Help me, Jesus. So we find ourselves in 2 Kings now, chapter 2, verse 19. The men of the city come to Elisha. Say, the city looks good. It looks pleasant to the eyes. But the water is bad. And the ground is barren. If the water is bad, and I'm letting you know everything needs water to live. That means everything has been polluted by bad water. And to make matters worse, the ground cannot produce. It's bare. It looks good, but we don't have no fruit. It looks good, but we've been polluted because the water's been bad. So the man of God says, bring me a new bowl, put some salt in it. So they brought it to him. A bowl and salt. And he said, I'm going to the source of the water where the water starts flowing. And he took and cast the salt in the water. And then he began to prophesy. And he said, I have healed this war. And from it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the waters remain healed to this day. I need, I need, I need, I need seven people. Come on this side real quick. One, two. Move quickly. Three. Four. Five. Six. Y'all got seven? Come on, come on, Brian. Good. That's good, perfect. He says, take me to the source of the water. I'm going to put it in a bowl, and I'm going to put the salt in the water. Now, salt represents in the scriptures either judgment or covenant. Amen. It also was something salt in the Old Testament was always mixed with offering. So when they brought a grain offering or wheat offering in Leviticus, it tells us they had to mix it with salt. Everything needs salt. And so we read in Matthew, y'all help me. It says, we are the salt of what? Yeah. Who's the salt? We are. Let's try it again. Who's the salt? We are. Good. Now, let's apply this to this region. Our region is, is, is what's going on in our region? Drugs to them. Families. Poverty. Poverty. All that's going on in our region. And if I stand as a prophet of the Lord. Yes, sir. As your man to God. As your pastor. Yes, sir. My job. 
is to take you as a salt and put you in the water. I put Brian in the water. Brian, what do you do? Oh, yeah! I'm going to put some therapy in the water. Because we need some therapists so the healing waters can come. Y'all don't hear me. What you do, Pete? Oh, I need a network marketer. I need somebody in the marketplace. Hallelujah. Some Holy Ghost filled strong man. Hallelujah. Spirit filled. Who can walk in the anointing in the marketplace and put him in the water. Darren, what you do? A leadership developer, a coach. I need you to help change the mentality of the pollution in our region when it comes to leadership. Oh, I wish y'all praise the Lord. Because the water's getting ready to get healed. I'm putting you in the water. All of you in here, I'm putting you in the water. You don't come in here every Sunday and not get ready to get put in the water. Our region needs to get healed. And the only way it's going to get healed is if you get in the water. Wesley, come here. What do you do, son? Huh? Counseling and security. I need some counselors and security that's Holy Ghost feel, that's able to discern whether people are crazy or if it's a demon. I can't get no help here. I need a spiritual man. Hallelujah. Whether somebody's excited or I need to rebuke that foul spirit. Hallelujah. Get in the wall. Mikey, what you do? A behavior specialist and teacher. Oh, I need you. Because some people got some crazy behavior. They got some wild ass nature. They need to be dealt with. Y'all, I ain't changed. I ain't lost my mind. And we need to learn how to deal with it. But we need somebody with the Holy Ghost to know how to discern their treatment with their education. Get in the wall. What you do, Precious? You don't know yet. You're in the right place. That means we need some people that can be Johnny on the spot. That can get in the wall. Come on, Johnny in the spot. That means if he needs you to pray, he's praying. If he needs you to lay hands, you can lay hands. If he needs you to feed the hungry, you can feed the hungry. You the Johnny in the spot. Get on in the wall. That's what. What tell me what you do? Oh yeah, we need somebody that can handle the MRI. You can handle that. No, you don't do MRI. Oh, okay. God got you monitoring their hearts. All right, we definitely need that. We need somebody to monitor the heart. Both physically. And because you got the Holy Ghost, you can do a spiritual checkup. You can tell if somebody's having a spiritual heart attack. You can tell if they need to be put on a heart monitor by the Holy Ghost. I can't get no help here now. Get on in the wall. We got counselors, we got security, we got Johnny on the spot, we got teachers, we got some network people, and they all in the wall. And the Bible said the next thing the prophet did was prophesy. And he said that this water, he said this water is going to be healed. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, this water is going to be healed. Rancid Charlestown, Shenandoah Valley, this whole western region, the waters will be healed. I declare that healing water will flow and there will be no more barrenness, no more death in the region. Take your seal it with a prayer. Oh, I don't believe anybody's excited. I don't believe anybody's excited. So 
touch your neighbor, say neighbor. The water is here. He's using a Jesus kind of church to heal the water. Say, oh neighbor, we are a Jesus kind of church. And he's using you and I to heal the water. Everybody stand. Lift your hands and give God a great praise. Got one more thing I gotta do.